I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and be glad. Come on, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is great and he is greatly to be praised. So we praise the Lord for this, the first Sunday in June. Uh, how blessed we are to be able to still gather virtually and to meet one another and to share time. And so I'm grateful that this is the day that the Lord has made. I am rejoicing and glad in it. Oh God, uh, just a few more days and I'll have a birthday. And so I'm excited about that. Don't call, don't bother me. I ain't, I ain't begging for presents or nothing like that. I just want to spend some time with me, some me time. Amen. So I'm looking forward to enjoying that. God bless you. This is also the month that I celebrate being called as pastor on my birthday. Uh, Oh, uh, something, woo, 30, some 37 years ago, you called me as pastor. And so we celebrate even at that. God bless you. That's good news. Amen. 37 years, no argument, no fight, no, no splits, no being put out, no being talked about, no being, thank you so much. Y'all been kind to me. No, but anyway, so we're, we're rejoicing in all that God has done. Listen. Also, uh, we're, we're going to meet uh, uh, with uh, deacons and trustees uh, as we plan our reopening. Date is inching closer and closer. Just as soon as we get all of the final details together, we'll be announcing there. Don't forget, though, uh, this month we celebrate all of our graduates. And so there is a thing in the bulletin. I saw it last week. Uh, you need to fill out the form, send in your picture. Uh, and, and your plans uh, so that you can be featured on the fourth Sunday of this month as we celebrate all of our graduates. Amen. And so you don't want to miss out on that. And so we thank God for all that. Listen, uh, let me let me brag on my praise team once again. Uh, how faithful they have been and how how they continue to provide us with with uplifting music for the worship. I am grateful to them each and every one of them. And let me see how grateful I am to our sister churches that continue to be faithful and steadfast as we hold together during this time of pandemic. Uh, thank uh, Pastor Garrett. I was with them on earlier today. And then uh, I'll probably be with Paradise later on this month. And so it's going to work out fine. And then if you just hang in there with us a little while longer, we'll be in person together. And so it'll be great news. Listen, I've got a message today as we start our new series on youth uh, resetting uh, uh, their positions. Uh, I want to talk about um, Jetta's daughter. And so uh, after praise team has sung, come back with us and let's hear the message for today. God bless you.
Well, come all the way with me now to the word of God. I'm in the book of Judges, uh, chapter 11. Let me just read verse 36. The word of God says, And she said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which hath proceeded out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord has taken vengeance for the, uh, thine enemies, even of the children of Ammon. I want to talk about resetting youth's position. But today my focus is just us, daughter. Let's pray. Father and our God, we thank you now for the privilege of preaching your word. If it please you, preach me that this people might be pushed from the norms and the comforts of everyday life to know that we have a supernatural responsibility to share our faith with those that are faithless, to cause this world to be turned to you and to our Christ. We pray even now that you give me holy boldness and clarity of speech, intent, and words that would cause those that are in darkness to come out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Seek and save that which is lost. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh even right now. Speak to me and through me. Be reckless without my permission. I covenant with you and this company never to take the credit, the glory, nor the honor, but tell the world you did it. And the power really does rest in you. Let the word of my mouth, yes, oh God, the very meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are my God. You are my strength. You are my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Well now, at the point of departure, think with me about the changes that have developed in the rearing of children. There was a day when children were seen and not heard. A time when yes sir and no ma'am were common expressions. The whining song, days of yea and nay, comes to mind. Uh, they sang, I remember when life was so simple. You did or you didn't, you would or you wouldn't, but it ain't like that anymore. I remember when life was so easy. Parents were the light, through them, we saw what was right, but it ain't like that anymore. I remember when life was so easy. Boys grew into men, little girls to women then, but it ain't like that anymore. We live in a world where children are abused and misused, and in our need to correct and protect, we have erred to the detriment of our society. Parents still have the right to discipline their own children, but it better be in the privacy of their own home or some well-meaning citizen will call the police and have them arrested. Each year, we see on the news, mothers arrested for spanking their children, their own children, in the parking lot of Kmart or Target, only to see another news report where parents are arrested for the killing of their own kids. And so this month, I want to celebrate all things youth. I want to commend the youth of this, the Great Open Door Missionary Baptist Church for their accomplishments. I want, I want to highlight all of the great things that the children of this church have done, the young people involved in the ministries of open door have done and what they do to make life better. And then I want to encourage all the youth to know that God has a plan for their life. God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, and I'll, I'll give you the basic Bible for English uh, translation because I like it. It says, for I am conscious of my thoughts about you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a hope at the end. Ah, did you hear that? God is aware of what he is thinking about us. We're on God's mind, young people. You're on God's mind. And he is determined 
to give you hope and a future so that your end will be better. Listen, uh, your, 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 your best days are not behind you. Your best days are yet to come. We may go through some things, but God will make it all right at the end. And I guess that may be the reason why I wanted to look at Jephthah's daughter. The thing that, that, that befalls her has nothing to do with her at all. If anyone can claim to be a victim of circumstances, it's her. As, I, as a matter of fact, her life is so much not about her that we're not even told her name. And I think I better say this before we go too far. Uh, if the story being told does not mention you by name, it's not about you. If folk are telling you your secret and they never call your name, it ain't about you. It's about them. It's about them trying to impress somebody else with some stuff that they think they know. Watch this. Jephthah's daughter is the victim of a bad decision. Let me tell you the whole story. Judges 11, 1 through 3 starts off. Now Jephthah the Gileonite uh, was the son of a prostitute, was a mighty warrior. Gilead uh, was his father. Uh, uh, and, and secondly, Gideon's wife also bore him some sons. And when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah away, saying to him, you shall not inherit anything in our father's house, for you are the son of a strange woman. Uh, then, then Jephthah fled uh, from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. Outlaws collected around him. Jephthah and, and, and went raiding with Jephthah. Notice three quick facts, and, and, and I, I, I want you to understand this. Number one, Jephthah had made uh, some things, well, let me put it this way. Jephthah had made something out of his life. Uh, he, he ends up, when he's introduced to us, as a mighty man of valor, a warrior, if you will, and, 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 and which simply says that Jephthah was a good soldier. He knew how to fight, knew how to defend himself. He, he was a strong man. And, and I think this is probably because he had to fight all of his life. Uh, he is the son of a harlot. And, and folk probably never let him forget who his mama was. And so he had to fight all of his life to defend himself. Second thing is, that his father had raised him in his home. But when his legitimate wife, uh, sons grew up, they put him out. Uh, Jephra is, 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 is his father's son. And, and I think that maybe his, Jephra's father, Gillet, uh, wife didn't have any children. And so uh, in, in the same thing as Abraham and all of the other kind of stuff, you know what I'm talking about. Jephra went out and got a son, brought him home which meant that his father did care for him and raised him in his own home. But when this uh, wife of his sons get big enough, they fight with Jethro and throw him out of the house, not wanting them, him to inherit what they thought belonged to them. Well, the third thing about Jethro, he had leadership skills. When he gets put out and goes to the land of Todd, there's a gang of outlaws that follow him. He becomes the leader of his own gang. And so it is. Uh, now, when you look at verses 4 through 11, the children of Ammon, these, 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 these uh, Gentiles, these non-Jews, the, these folks that should have been killed when, when, uh, when uh, Joshua was coming into the land, when, when the children of Israel first got to Canaan, they should have wiped them all out, but they didn't. Uh, they make war against Israel. And the elders of Gilead want Jephthah to come and be their captain. Jephthah, they want uh, to take over the army and to rid them of these, their enemies. And, and, and Jephthah says, if you bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon and, and the Lord delivers them into my hands, uh, I, I, I need to know that I'm going to be your head, that I'm going to be in charge now. And and the elders at verse 10 agreed to it. And, 
And they say to Jephthah, the Lord be witness between us if we do not do according to the words. And so the people called Jephthah, not God. Ah, God's going to ratify the agreement later on, but, but the decision they make, they make it, and, and God will, will, will allow it to be, and God will give him victory. But Jephthah will judge just Gilead, not all of Israel. Uh, he is going to be the judge in Gilead, but not the total of the nation. And allow me uh, to push this fact. God will bless some folk in limited capacity, but that does not give them rulership over everything. Mayor uh, Lloyd Lightford is over the city of Chicago, and J.B. Pritzker is over the state of Illinois, but Kamala Harris runs the nation. <laughs> but, but, but you said she jumped the vice president, you, you don't understand. Anytime a black woman is that close to the top, you got to know she's the one calling the shot. Let, let, let me help some of my pastor friends. God has given me and surrounded me by some pastors that, that I watch out for and try and help as they minister to the people that they're called to serve. God has surrounded me. They'll, they'll be on the line this evening at five. We'll eat the Lord's Supper together. But, but God has uh, given me to you. So let me help you, brethren uh, and sisters. Uh, 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 surround yourself, pastors, with some strong and able people who can take charge. People who can do their part and make sure it's important. But, but, but God will invest his authority in his pastor. You serve as the overseer of it all. And, and so even though you got, you got those that are skilled in their, their certain fields, let them take charge of it and, and make sure, oversee them that they do it right. Yeah, Jephthah is not uh, going to have rulership over Israel. He just has rulership of Gilgad and, 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 and tries uh, uh, as he will God will bless him at that. Now, now, Jethro agrees and, and the people agree. And so he tries to solve the dispute with diplomacy. Uh, he tries to, to reason with the children of Ammon. It's at verse 12 to 26, but it fails. And so he goes to battle. But before going off to war in verse 29, it says... Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jethana, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mispas of Gilead, and from Mispas of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Ammon. Verse 30. And Jethana vowed a vow unto the Lord, and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hand, Verse 31, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Amma shall surely be the Lord's and I will offer it upon a burnt offering. Jephthah led his army across the land of Gilead and Manasseh and passed Mitzvah in Gilead and attacked the armies of the Ammons. Uh, but Jether uh, had vowed to the Lord that if God would help Israel conquer the Amorites, uh, uh, then uh, when he returned home in peace, the first person coming out of his house to meet him would be sacrificed as a burnt offering to the Lord. And, and, and some theories have tried to say that what he meant was that the first thing, such as an animal, but, but the original language does not bear it out. Uh, and others say that he, he, he could have meant a, a, a servant or a foreign slave, but, 
None of these explanations hold water. Uh, they said that the houses were built with small little gates and so that the animals would run in and out. So that's what he was talking about. But it, it's, it's not so. It, 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 it's, it's not what, what really happens. Uh, uh, these explanations are, are, are trying to make up for the horrific act that Jethro is doing. Jethro is going off to war and in, in trouble and not sure if he'll make it back. And so he makes a foolish vow. Jethro returns to the camp of Mispaz. He, he gets back home and he begins his march against the enemy. And here he makes a foolish vow. It is in accordance with the ancient custom of generals at the start of a war. On, on, on the eve of battle to promise uh, the God of their worship uh, uh, offering or to dedicate uh, uh, something valuable uh, to their deity. The, the event in the event that the deity provides them with victory. Vows were commonplace in that day, also among the Israelites. And, and, and they were encouraged by divine approval flowing out from the spirit of gratitude at, and rules were laid down in the law for regulation and, and regulating the vows that we made. You, if you made a vow, then you, you had to keep it. Uh, and they said that it was better not to make a vow than to make a vow and break it. But, but it's difficult to bring Jethro's vow within the legitimate range God had allowed. God had forbid his people to offer their children in sacrifice. Ah, Leviticus uh, chapter 18 verse 21 says, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of our God. I, I am the Lord. It is true in Genesis 22 that, that God told Abraham to offer Isaac, but, but he didn't allow him to offer Isaac. When Abraham did as God instructed him and drew back the knife to slay his son, God spoke twice, Abraham, Abraham, stay your hand. And there's a ram uh, stuck in the thicket. God provided a, a, a sacrifice. God provided a substitute, if you will, for Isaac. He didn't want Isaac. He just wanted Abraham to know that, that he was more important than anything, that Abraham would not hold back anything from God. He didn't allow him to kill his son. Micah, the prophet, helps us to understand uh, that God's not interested in our sacrifice. It says, how, how can we make it up to you? For what we've done, God, how, how, how can we give you something that will, will work out in our favor? Shall, shall we bow down before the Lord with offerings of a yearling, calves, or, or, or for do we uh, offer him a thousand of rams and 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Would, would that uh, make God happy? Would that please him? Would he be satisfied? Would that, if we sacrificed our oldest child, would that make God glad? Then, then, then would he forgive us and, 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 and wipe out our sins? Of course not, the prophet says. Uh, no, he does not uh, want any of those things. He's told us what's right and what he wants. This is all that he wants us is to be fair, uh, to do just uh, and merciful and to walk humbly with him. And we need to be clear, this is Jethro's uh, foolishness. And, and, and none of this has anything to do with his child. This is Jethro's doing. This is not his daughter's problem. Uh, young people, the trouble of this world has nothing to do with you. No, the, the, the conflict between right and wrong started way back in the Garden of Eden. Uh, the war uh, that, that rages in, in the world, the, the, the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians going on now was going on before you were ever even conceived. Uh, police brutality has always been directed toward black people. Mar Marvin Gaye. 
Uh, go back and uh, look at YouTube. You probably don't even know who he is, young people. But Marvin Gaye's album, What's Going On, released in 1971, has a line in the song about trigger happy polices. And so there's nothing new under the sun, but, but you get to hit the reset, uh, young people. Your, you, your uh, youth can reset uh, positions. The, the dominant culture says that we're dumb, and, and, and so you get to go to college and graduate top of the class. Uh, the dominant culture says that we're too lazy, uh, and so you get to show up for work every day early and on time and, and before time. They, they say that we're too emotional, and so you get to hold your peace and be calm, cool, and collected in the midst of all that they try and do to us. Uh, they say that we don't know how to handle finances, so yes, we get to build our own banks again, build our own company, let our entrepreneurial spirit flourish, and we make our own money. We, we develop our own enterprises. They say we have no morals. Well, we build strong families. And, and then we show the true meaning of Christianity by loving one another. Yeah, Jethro's daughter does all uh, uh, that, that she's supposed to do, but this is not about her. And, and, and more. Uh, uh, listen, here, here, verse 36, uh, uh, the NIV says, my father, she replied, you have given your word to the Lord. Do to me just as you promise. Now that the Lord has avenged you of your enemies, the Ammonites. Uh, Young's literal translation. The girl says, then she said, Unto him, my father, thou has opened thy mouth unto Jehovah. Uh, do to me as it has gone out from thy mouth. After that, Jehovah has done for thee vengeance on thine enemies, on the Benny Anon. Yeah, yeah, I've opened my mouth to the Lord, she says, and, and that's the song says, and I can't take it back. Well, the Bible in basic English, she says to him, my father, you have made an oath to the Lord. Do then to me whatever you have said, for the Lord has sent a full reward on your haters, ah, on the children of Amon. This daughter says to her dad, do what you got to do. And that's what every child of God needs to say to God. Do what you got to do. Whatever it takes, Lord, do what you got to do. I, I hear Diane uh, and Cos Diane Williams. Yeah, Cosmopolitan, the warrior singing. In my ear, even right now, Diane said, if it takes all the worldly things from my life, make me better. Please, Lord make me better. If it, if, if, if it means that I have a lot to sacrifice, then make me better. Please, God, make me better. If it means sometimes I have to fight with tear-stained eyes, uh, make me better, Lord. Please, God, make me better. Even if it means that I will, will falter when I try, I'll get up and be strong if you make me so. Please make me better. She says, I want to give you my best. And I can only uh, uh, be hurting myself if I try to give you left. Oh, I got to get out of here enough. Uh, 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 God, just make us better. Because being good is not good enough. Uh, uh, make me, I want to do my best. And so I'm, I'm done. But, but God does not want us to sacrifice our children. He has blessed us with, with them, but, but he loves us so much that God will treat us better that, that, yeah, he'll allow us better than he does for himself. What do you mean, preacher? Well, God so loved the world. 
that he gave us his only begotten son. That's right. God decided that, that there was not enough in this world to, 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 to separate us from him. And so he took on the form of human flesh and came down in the person of his own son. There he lived among us for 30 and three years. He healed the sick. He raises the dead. He opens blinded eyes. He straightened with the limbs. The lame walk, the blinded see, and the deaf does hear. Yeah, he goes to Calvary outside the city wall there where they nail his hands ridden his feet lift him high drop him low he dies God dies for the sins of the world he gives up his only begotten son they bury him in a borrowed tomb they watch him three days and three nights but on the third day morning he gets up with all power of heaven and earth in his hand and one of these days thank you Jesus he coming back again. Every eye will see him. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. He's Lord. He died that we might live. What is it? Living he loved us and dying he saved us but buried he carried our sins far away and rising he justifies us. Frees us forever and one of these days hey when I can read my title clear to mansions in the sky I'll bid farewell to these earthly cares he's promised yeah and wipe our weeping eyes and so you need to make a choice uh, as as you go about uh, confronting the problems of the day as our young people are facing the hard decisions of life. It's not their fault. They didn't cause this problem. But the show can reset it for us. And so would you reset your values? Would you make a decision? Would you trust our Christ? It's your hour. It's your time. It's your opportunity. You need to confess Jesus as Lord. It is simple. All you have to do is just open your mouth and pray a simple sinner's prayer. Simply pray with me. Come on, do it. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I believe you are the son of God. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. And by that confession, by that simple confession, we accept our own salvation, rich, full, and complete. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. If you've done that, I believe you got born again. Send us a note. Uh, mail it to the church. Uh, call us at 773-762-8753. Leave the message. We'll get back in touch with you. Email us. Go to the website and, and push to contact me. We'll get back in touch with you and walk you through the steps as you start your new life in Christ. Do it today. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Now is the day of salvation. God bless you. Have a smile on you. Well, thank you. Listen, uh, one, one point I really want to make you understand. Young people are not really responsible for all of the things that are going on in this world today. These things were happening before they got here, but they have an opportunity to push the reset button and to change the conditions that are around us. I, I'm thanking God for the Black Lives Movement. It's a young people's movement. They are taking charge and trying to do things really well so that we can conform, change this society. But then also I thank God for the, the young of our church, especially uh, as we celebrate graduation uh, Sunday on the fourth Sunday. These are young people that are proving themselves academically, resetting the priorities of life and changing the conditions to make life better for all of us. And so I'm excited about that. I said that, that if they don't call your name, they're not talking about you. They're just talking about something that, to make them feel important. And so don't be distracted by the nonsense. Stay on point, young people. God is going to bless you. God loves us. All right. It's time to give the offering. What do we say? Trust the Lord. Every member is a tithing member. As we gather, uh, pay your tithes. Listen, there are three ways you can give. You can go to our website, uh, hit the donate button. You'll be directed to the PayPal. And there you can use your bank card to give your offering. Or you can drop it in the mail. Send it to Greater Open Door, 
1302 South Sawyer, Chicago, Illinois, 60623. Or either drive by the campus. We're, we're trying to beautify things, keep the grass cut, clean the lawn, uh, fix up, uh, keep the windows clean and bright so that when you come back in here, you'll feel like, oh, we, we did it specially just for you. It's a drive by, take a peep in, drop your offering in the mail. It is secure. God bless you for, for all that you give. Uh, then there's the, the Zelle platform. This is the most popular one. Go to your bank. Hit your Zelle platform, send it to Greater Open Door, the number one at AOL.com, and we will receive it from your account to our account. No mess, no fuss, no nothing. It's simple and easy. And so whatever you do, know that your, your offering, your, your tithe, your, your, your giving goes for the preaching of the gospel, for the building of God's kingdom till he shall come and get us out of this unfriendly world. We minister to those in this North Lawndale community and when the need arises and God gives us unction, we reach out to all over the world so that this gospel will be known to all that are hurting. Thank you for all that you do. Until next week, uh, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up the light of his continent on you and give you peace. That is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Pray.